Hey guys, let's talk about the full moon that we have playing out in the sign of Aries. This is happening on September 29th, 2023. Universal time, it's happening at 9.58 Eastern time where I'm recording this video. It's happening at 5.58 a.m. And it is also happening at exactly six degrees on the dot of the signs of Aries and Libra. Of course, this is a full moon. So this is going to be number one, our midpoint in our Virgo cycle that is playing out actually right now. We are halfway through the new moon in Virgo that happened just two weeks ago, and we are two weeks out from our new moon in Libra that's going to be coming up next. And I do believe, honestly, this full moon that we have, this Aries full moon, is really going to be probably doing a lot to foreshadow what is likely to be coming with the Libra cycle that's going to be happening with our new moon in Libra in two weeks. Um... And that is because this is a full moon in Aries, right? Which is ruled by Mars. Mars is currently in the sign of Libra coming into a conjunction with the South Node that is going to have a lot to do with the energy that we're dealing with as we move through our Libra cycle. Libra is also a cardinal cycle. This is an action-oriented time of year. It's also the sign that has to do with other people, groups, relationships, friendship circles, uh, finances as well. And the way that things are coming together for this full moon today and what we're going to talk about in terms of the energy of this full moon are, like I said, likely to be giving us some indications of the type of Libra season that we're going to be having coming up next as well. So we're sort of looking ahead, both in terms of the full moon, what's going to be playing out of this next two weeks, but also the way that what's happening now may impact what is to come in the following lunar cycle as well. And this is a really, I guess, um, we could call it a heated energy that we have going on. Of course, we're in an Aries full moon. Aries is ruled by Mars. This is always likely to be sort of an extra feisty and fiery time of year whenever we're dealing in Aries full moon energy because Aries, this is a sign of the warrior, right? Mars is the lord of the battlefield. The moon, this is our emotions and our feelings and our internal environment. And when we have an Aries moon, this has a tendency of honestly like firing us up a little bit inside. This can give us some courage, motivation, motivation, inspiration, like strength, confidence, belief in ourselves, like a desire to be independent and to move forward with something. This is also a very action oriented feeling, a desire to do something, to make something happen that we have going on. Just across the board whenever we're talking about an Aries moon, moon, specifically an Aries full moon, because our full moons always function as sort of an energetic climax, right? When energy is really at a high point, it can bring sort of illuminations and revelations about something as well, shining the full light onto something and also helping us to understand, you know, where we're at now in the process of what we are trying to bring into creation or manifestation throughout the course of that lunar cycle. So we have an energetic high point going on. We have a full moon and in the sign of Aries, again, this could just be a time when we are feeling really fired up about something, okay? And with Mars being the ruler of the sign of Aries and a lot of other indications that are playing out, I'm telling you, you guys, we are heading towards a season of some big, sudden, and unexpected changes in relationships and in finances. It is a repeating pattern that is representing itself in a multitude of ways across this new moon chart. And you know, we are, like I said, halfway through now the Virgo cycle, which if you guys watched my Virgo new moon video, this is a cycle about bringing some abrupt and sudden unexpected but productive and necessary changes as well, having been in a trine to the planet Uranus. I will tell you guys, there's a major energetic push right now to help us redefine ourselves in the context of like any type of group, any group identity that we have sort of been clinging to and deriving our own sense of identity from, but that we are realizing at this point in time may no longer be a true reflection of who we really are, where we're really at, who we're becoming now, the like potential and purpose that we feel rising within us and that we're coming to discover. These are, it's the season of change, okay? We have come to the end of an era in terms of relationship dynamics that have defined us up until this point in time. This could also, again, have to do with like monetary financial type stuff as well. And just even the way that we are maybe relating to ourselves, relating to others, relating to the world at large, relating to reality. Um, major changes in the ways that we are relating, period. 
likely to be either pending, going on now, or something that um, is kind of becoming more and more of a relevant part of our experience moving through this next couple weeks, this full moon energy. And again, through the Libra season as well, because, you know, as we get into this analysis, you guys will understand that there is a major emphasis on relationships. Libra season is, of course, a season all about relationships and socializing and other people with Mars and the South Node currently transiting the sign of Libra for our Libra season conflicts and old conflicts as well coming up somehow that help us transition out of again certain groups and social situations relationship dynamics that have defined us in the past that we are realizing no longer fit us anymore this is the entire juice this is the entire tea now let's break this down and let's look at some of these patterns that are coming through like i said literally everything about this full moon chart that is coming together right now is just the series of repeating patterns indicating changes in relationships, specifically who we've defined ourselves by and who we are realizing that we are becoming now and the need to make some changes along those lines. You know, there's this like little rule of thumb that says we are essentially the combination of the five people that we spend the most time with. And if that is the case, then we are all about to undergo some radical purpose personal changes because universe is reorganizing who we're relating with, who we're associating with, and the groups that we are defining ourselves by. And again, there's a few different patterns, a few different aspects that are playing out that are speaking to this exact same theme. Number one, okay, the primary planets involved in this full moon itself, Mars, Venus, and Uranus. Mars, because this is an Aries full moon. Mars is the ruler of Aries. Venus, because this is an Aries full moon, which means the sun and the moon are in polar opposition. And if the moon is in Aries, that is because the sun is in the sign of Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. So we've got Mars and we've got Venus as two of our primary planets, primary players in this full moon. Mars and Venus, masculine and feminine, feminine. To me, when I see these two planets sort of isolated as an influence together, it's representing relationship dynamics. Now, the third primary player that we have involved in our full moon in Aries is Uranus. Uranus is making an exact square to Venus while the sun is in Venus, <laughs> while the sun is in Libra, sorry, for our full moon in Aries. And this is not just a, this is not just an isolated Venus Uranus square. This is actually the third path of this aspect because of Venus's retrograde through the sign of Leo. So this is um, a very significant Venus Uranus square that we have going on. And and Uranus is also in an almost exact trying to Mercury for our full moon as well. Mercury being the messenger planet. There is some type of sudden understanding, news, information, awakening, awareness, epiphany, flash of insight, sudden download, conversation that we're hearing, information that we're privy to, message coming through that is doing something to our levels of awareness, our levels of understanding that are playing some role in whatever relationship shakeups are going on in this energy as a result of the Venus square to Uranus. So the primary planets in this full moon are Mars, Aries, Moon, Libra with the sun or Venus, sorry, with the sun in the sign of Libra and also Uranus making significant and exact aspects to Venus and also to Mercury. Mars and Venus, this is relationship dynamics. Uranus, this is sudden shocks, surprises, things happening out of the blue, upsets, but it's for the purpose ultimately of putting things right somehow. Uranus is also the galactic fixer. Uranus makes the changes for us that we haven't been able to make for ourselves. So there is some level of like divine realignment, divine intervention going on in the context of relationships coming through with this full moon. We know that first and foremost, just by the players involved, okay? Now, 
moving on. The next layer of the repetition of these same ideas, themes, and vibes that are coming through. So we've got Venus, Mars, and Uranus, shakeups in relationships, unexpected, but for the purpose of fixing things and making some type of necessary productive change. Now, as I said, we also have Mars currently transiting the sign of Libra with the South Node. The South Node rules the past, but it's also what we need to detach from and move on from in order to essentially grow in a new direction. All Ways, you know the north node and south node ruling destiny and karma the past and the future whenever we're dealing with a lesson and a theme in regards to the south node the polarized and oppositional lesson and themes are sort of the plan and the evolution that we are going and growing towards when we consider the north node so in this circumstance when we're talking about the south node in the sign of libra this is coming to the end of previous relationship dynamics and attachments and you know group that we've been a part of for the purpose of redefining ourselves somehow, of rediscovering ourselves somehow, and of reactivating some type of like personal purpose or personal mission that we need to sort of deal with and move towards over the span of time that the North Node, destiny and what we're growing into is transiting the sign of Aries, the sign of the self. So when we're dealing with the Aries and Libra polarity as we are for this full moon and as we're going to be throughout Libra season, Season as well this is going to be bringing up themes of self versus others and with the south node being the node that is in the sign of Libra and also with Mars this is going to be bringing up themes of the end of an era and some type of relational context so that we can find out who we really are what we're truly capable of and go in the direction that universe is calling us towards next this is a personal leadership era that we are moving into and the relationship changes that that are being indicated now as a result of all of this energy coming into fruition are actually to help us find ourselves, rediscover ourselves, rediscover our true purpose and remove blockages to growth and potential that may have been represented by the past groups and relationships and ways of relating with ourselves even through which we have defined ourselves so we've got indications that you know venus mars and uranus shakeups and relationships going on and then also south node mars in the sign of Libra, and we're going to talk about more, more about this as we get the report, but this is also indicating either some type of conflicts that are causing an end in certain relationship dynamics, or finally moving on from past conflicts and relationships that are coming up right now as well. So that is another, you know, repeating indication that we are at a point when big changes in relationships are underway. Now, the third indication that is a repeating pattern coming through in regards to changes in relationships is, of course, Venus being in the third exact square to Uranus for this full moon. Classic astrology, you guys, like basics, basics, basics. Venus and square to Uranus, this is the aspect that indicates sudden changes in relationships. Squares bring conflicts, okay? Venus is about relationships. Uranus is about sudden change. We've also got Mars in the sign of Libra. This is also conflicts in relationships. Full moons reveal things. This is an energetic climax. We've got Mars south node in Libra. This is talking about the end of an era letting things go moving on from things in the context of the group in the context of the social norms in the context of past fights and conflicts with other people in the context of other people generally or relationships partnerships financial situations how we've been making money or in the way that we have been relating to ourselves and relating to our own value Venus and a square to Uranus, same thing. Some type of conflict causing a need for us to free ourselves from something that has been. And here's the, here's the other thing. We've also got Venus in the sun right now for our full moon in a mutual reception with each other. The sun is transiting the sign of Libra right now, ruled by Venus. Venus transiting the sign of Leo, ruled by the sun, while... The moon is opposite the sun, right? And Venus is an exact square for the third time to Uranus. And we're going to talk about this more as well, but this is all about changes, helping us to free ourselves to align with the truth of our heart in a way that really makes us feel alive, really brings us back to life in some type of a way. So 
all of those three different like ways the energy is coming together like I said first of all Venus Mars and Uranus being the primary influences going along with this moon changes in relationship dynamics Mars in the south node coming into conjunction with the sign of Libra changes in relationship dynamics Venus in a square exactly to Uranus for the third time changes in relationship dynamics all of this stuff has everything to do with changes in relationship dynamics and why is this happening full moon in the sign of Aries with Chiron and with the north node so that we can redefine ourselves in a in alignment with a greater sense of self mastery essentially going through this process of self actualization this is uh, this next year and a half okay and the energy that we're moving through and the energy that is being um you know activated with this full moon has a lot to do with the chiron energy the chiron archetype the heal the hero's journey where we overcome states of victimhood that have defined us in the past and that have kept us attached to people and situations and relationships that have been blocking us from realizing and recognizing the truth of our potential and who we can really be what we can really become and what our life can really look like if we get out of our own way and start aligning with the divine vision of what could be for our lives instead of staying attached as a result of these unhealed wounds within us to these lower dimensional versions of ourselves that are no longer a match for the energy that is incoming as we move into the age of Aquarius we are all being upgraded on an energetic level this is a conscious awakening right a conscious evolution the great awakening and a huge facet of that is awakening to our own personal truth and the value of our own potential and with the north node transiting the sign of aries right now this is a activating some type of destiny for us on some level all of us collectively you know whether or not we are going to answer that call is dependent upon where we're at in our own personal journey and you know karma will operate accordingly but this is a very important period of time right now and everything energetically is going to be moving towards rearranging and reorganizing relationship dynamics that we have defined ourselves by in the past okay where is ego a reflection of group identity that does not fit us anymore how do we how have we viewed ourselves how have we personified ourselves how have we identified with ourselves and with our ego in the past based on perhaps maybe previous states of victimhood or things that have happened to us and you know the version of ourselves that we created as a result of those things and how perhaps are we discovering now that that is actually not our truth that that is not actually not who we are and you know coming to a point where we really need to reorganize and rearrange a lot of the relational components of our lives so that they are no longer a reflection of this past version of ourselves that was defined by maybe the trauma the pain the wounding and not the strength the wisdom the courage that we are coming to dif discover are truly our defining characteristics right now okay so this is definitely a kind of a reversal as well I'm saying you know this is a season of reversals a fall of reversals that we've been moving towards even though we have all of the personal planets now direct we have all of the outer planets retrograde things are being switched and flipped and reorganized and you know just sort of uh, reevaluated and redone reworked restructured reformed also so all of that being said you know we do also have a mercury uranus energy going on i mentioned it a bit um previously this is also the third pass of mercury uranus in a trine in earth signs this is an epiphany this is a flash of insight this is like a download this is suddenly gaining an awareness this is also something just like freeing our mind somehow maybe just like suddenly seeing things in a new light from a new perspective this is also also like on a very mental level having a desire to free ourselves from something to have a more broad and um, flexible perspective to not be so rigid to not be so nailed down to be more like able to be spontaneous and go with the flow of things this is also um, just really being surprised perhaps by what might be coming out of somebody's mouth but generally sudden awakenings and revelations having an extremely huge and transformative impact on our lives and relationships another major component of the energy that is playing out with this full moon because of the fact that the messenger planet 
is in the trine with Uranus for the full moon. And remember, we are halfway through a lunar cycle that was embodying the same energy, manifesting the same energy. The full moon or the new moon itself, the new moon in Virgo was in a trine to Uranus also. And now we've got Mercury there. There is some eye opening information that is literally like catalytic for all of these relationship changes that are going on. There is some level of awareness. There is some awakening. Like I was saying, there's a major dimension of the energy right now that has a lot to do with breaking us out of any type of like spell or illusion or delusion or mind control on a relational basis that we have been held in or you know operating in or fixed in also in the Taurus Leo fixed energy that the Uranus um, Venus square is operating out of but I'm telling you guys this Mercury Uranus influence like there is this is also it's also like electrifying the field there could definitely be a sense of electricity in the air uh, like a very high octave like nervous tension anxious tension things happening split second lightning speed um changes also because you know mercury this is options choices decisions opportunities um you know this has to do with also like partnerships and pairs so again another thing having to do with like sudden unexpected changes that are impacting you know partners relationships pairings um couplings together as well major major i mean they're i they're romantic relationships are definitely on the chopping block you guys at this point in time if they are out of alignment with any level of authenticity okay like that's what this is all about it's like if the authenticity is there, but there's just like minor issues in the relationship, like there's pro like this energy could be healing and it could help to actually solve problems in the relationships to help us let relationship conflicts go to maybe move on from relationship conflicts that have been causing an issue for a long period of time because of unhealed wounds that are existing in either of the people. And it's like through, through each party sort of going through this personal healing journey as a result of this energy that's coming through as well. Um, and the authenticity existing in the relationship, the ability to be very real about the entire process, like this could actually be very strengthening to relationships that are operating along these lines under these octaves. But any relationships that are built with any level of shallowness, any level of facade, any level of trauma bonding or codependency, you know, people in a relationship based on shared misfortunes or shared traumatic experiences that had you know kind of become like the glue that held the relationship together or like you know we've been through these traumatic experiences you know simultaneously so we can relate to each other on these levels and that is what holds us together um and like i said also like any type of like codependency and stuff like that where you know we feel like we're reliant on other people to you know have any sense of safety or security or survival or whatever in one way or another independence versus codependence okay personal strength versus the like group cohesion or the strength that is coming from numbers all right like these are sort of what's at odds and what are like breaking down or coming up against each other um as this energy unfolds but ultimately like I've been saying, I'm going to repeat it again. This is a full moon in Aries that is in the same sign as Chiron and in the same sign as the North Node. The purpose of what is playing out now is to help us heal old wounds that have kept us detached from our own personal power and have kept us reliant on the validation of some type of social or group context somehow. Okay. You know, like I said, relationships that are built on authenticity can go through individual healing processes that make them stronger and put the conflict in the past relationships that are not built on authenticity that have any you know transactional nature or that are just more shallow in their foundations these are not going to sustain these are the relationships and also that keep us attached to any state of victimhood it's like any friends groups or any relationships or social circles that we are a part of as a result of shared victimhood or shared trauma 
but that like double as sort of keeping us held in that identity of that trauma like this is also what we are moving on from this is a period of time right now where we are being called to overcome our weaknesses to gain confidence to learn from our experiences to be more independent to take risks to go in a new direction to find our strength to find our courage to find our passion you know to pursue this individualized mission to like grow somehow okay we can't do that if we are attached to groups that are defined by states of previous victimhood so that type of thing I really do think is gonna really start to go by the wayside and it's going to disrupt the peace you know it's gonna bring up issues for sure but I'm telling you you guys it will ultimately be for the best the moon in Aries, you know, we need to acknowledge this is a very emotionally strong, courageous, independent, assertive, motivated, passionate, risk-taking energy. We are likely to be feeling inspired to do something. People are probably going to be very assertive, standing up for themselves, you know. With the Mercury Uranus, saying some shocking things. With the Venus Uranus, uh, desiring some very, very different out of the ordinary experiences. But again, Venus, Sun and mutual reception, we need to feel alive. We need to feel re-inspired. We need to feel revitalized on some level. And that is, you know, what everything also is sort of pushing towards. However, the moon in Aries ruled by Mars. This can also be very, very ego driven. Okay. Emotionally reactive, conflict oriented, violent, angry, aggressive, primed and ready for a fight. Okay. When we've got Aries moon going on as well, especially in this very supercharged emotional energy with the prime for conflict, specifically in relationships, specifically to do with matters of the heart. Okay. The Venus sun mutual reception of course this is also bringing up ego all right ego wounds with chiron and mars also in a lo loose opposition as well people could really really be acting out from some very sort of like aggressive and emotionally charged hyper reactive states okay so we are going to want to do our best to think before we react to things and better yet not react at all but to take our time to respond to things and to not allow ourselves to be like sort of triggered into taking some type of action that is really going to you know cause some major issues for us, disrupt the peace in some type of major way. Of course, like I said, there is a level of divine intervention that is playing out right now as well. And you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. And for the most part, I do think, you know, it's going to ultimately be for the best, but we can sort of, you know, prevent maybe a level of the severity of disruption and conflict that we're dealing with by being more conscious of our own reactions to things and not allowing ourselves to get carried away by the fire that could be just like burning in us to you know do something to react especially if we feel again any type of ego wound or um just issues matters of the heart that you know hurt feelings all of those things also very very indicated in this energy okay um so with the, the Mars and the South Node energy and this, this Aries full moon, this could be playing out, you know, I've said it a couple different ways. It could be going a couple different ways. On one hand, it could be us coming to a point in time where we're finally ready to let go of these old wounds, of these old conflicts, of these old hurt feelings and move away, you know, um, allow it to stop being a defining factor of our lives and our relationship styles and the relationships that we're involved with. Or this could also have to do with like old fights coming back up, old conflicts coming back up, sparking back up in relationships, hurt feelings maybe from the past coming back around. But again, there is some type of remedy or resolution or solution or letting go or moving on that is simultaneously involved in this. So it's definitely about moving on from something, whether it's about letting go of past conflicts or the current conflicts coming up, helping us to bring something to an end and move on to something that has, you know, served its course as well. Like both of those ways, both of those ways. But again, 
ultimately the purpose behind it is to help us gain this greater awareness of and bring to an end the ways that we have acted and behaved in the past that are not good for us anymore that just are not in alignment with who we want to become at this point in time especially of course again with all this libra energy venus energy in the context of the group or in the context of other people now let's, we've talked all about the moon. Let's talk about the sun for a minute. The sun is in the sign of Libra, like I said, ruled by Venus, who is in the exact square to Uranus. For the third pass of this energy, this is just going to make us feel like we need to change. This is a this is craving change in terms of anything, again, that is not lighting us up inside, that is like stealing our light, that is blocking our light, that is keeping us also from being able to truly um, see our own value, see our own worth, or live in a way that is allowing like our personal truth or our personal joy to experience like freedom of expression. Personal self-expression is very, very important when we have Venus in the the sign of Leo and the sun in the sign of Libra this has to do with relationship dynamics as well and Venus in the square to Uranus in her sign of Taurus also about partnership dynamics and stuff like that I'm telling you you guys any groups relationships social circles partnerships work situations even um, that are blocking or preventing um, a level of value, a level of potential, a level of, you know, worth on some level, or that are keeping us from feeling alive, that are, that are weighing us down, that are making us feel, you know, bored and monotonous and that are like stealing the, the light out of our life and stuff like that. Like this is going to become unbearable for the most part. I think moving through this next couple weeks, moving through Libra season, again, another indication that we are ready, that we are desiring with Venus. Venus is what we want. Venus is what we we desire uh when we've got this venus square uranus energy it's like we can't take it anymore we are desiring to do something different that lights us up inside that re sparks like our heart okay that reinvigorates us on some level and that makes us feel alive we will not allow other people to block our ability to love ourselves to express our truth and to find our personal joy and value when we have this energy playing out we need to align our relationships with the truth of our heart and also how we're making Making our money as well there is an impulse to free ourselves from anything that doesn't see or recognize our value worth potential what do we need to grow and shine and bloom and rather in all this Libra energy who do we need who is it that we need this is what we're realizing in this energy and you know this is why these changes are happening something opening our eyes to something seeing something from a different perspective and the impact that it is having on us it's like causing us it's firing us up to need to or to want to make some changes now this of course is all on sort of a microcosm individual level on the macrocosm level this translates into alliances and allegiances that are very much changing geopolitical power dynamics are changing reversals and judgments underway mass awakenings and also dramatic changes in like political and ruling class power over the minds over the narratives over the perspectives of the people okay that's the the libra energy like this is definitely indicating changes in alliances on a geopolitical level going on it also could be breakdowns and deals agreements like treaties negotiations or also past conflicts coming up right some past conflicts that are again active on a world stage somehow this also could have to do with things involving fire things involving energy and things involving weapons as well conflict between people and groups could be definitely more prominent like there could be like attacks you know what i mean like there could be some type of attacks that we see go on with the full moon in aries mars lord of the battlefield but honestly it feels like more like infighting you know what i mean it, it feels like infighting between groups and alliances if we're talking about this more macrocosm level vying for sort of like power and control as a result of unexpected things that have transpired that people were not anticipating so this is shifting and changing power dynamics allegiances and partnerships as a result of unexpected events that have transpired that were not in alignment with the plans that were underway at this period of time so 
Um, you know, it, it, and again, this is a primed energy for attacks, conflicts, uh, weapons, and, and stuff like that. So we do also need to keep that type of stuff in mind. And of course, themes of self versus others, the individual versus the group. Also, you know, the needs of the individual versus the collective. There could be like things like this that are kind of playing out that have a more greater significance right now. And as I said earlier, my word of caution, my word of advice for this energy, we need to think before we act. We need to respond to things and not overreact from an emotionally heated or emotionally charged state of mind. Mars also rules the head. Okay, this is very like, could be very like bombastic, hot headed energy, people sort of like spiraling out of control. Um, especially again, if it's coming from a sense of like a wounded ego an ego wound or some type of like hurt feelings that are affecting people on a very heart based level. Okay. However, also the other, you know, the higher octaves of this energy, it can also be a very healing and a very revealing time if we are able to sort of let our ego go, search for the higher level of wisdom of things, you know, strive for a greater union with our higher selves when it comes to situational things that have played out in relationships, reevaluate perhaps the things that have happened to us through the hurt feelings, through the states of victimhood, through the relationship issues and conflicts that we've had, you know, take accountability for our role in whatever transpired and be able to, you know, see things just from that higher person perspective universe is trying to help us to heal help us to release be released from patterns of behaviors and relating with others that stem from original initial wounds okay and our own perceived weaknesses within us okay universe is trying to connect us to our personal truth help us rediscover who we really are our true purpose our true destiny and give us the inspiration and the courage and the strength okay the motivation to help break us free from this social conformity again that may have been restricting our ability to come into our own in the past because again of these unhealed wounds within us that simultaneously you know universe is working to help us heal and recover from at this point in time as well we need to invoke the spiritual warrior that's definitely i feel like a beneficial archetypal energy to work with as we go out as we go throughout the this um this period of time of course being it the full moon in the sign of aries this is the warrior archetype but chiron is there as well this is the spiritual warrior and if again the higher octaves of this masculine energy this is you know passion and this righteous anger to do the right thing thing not to get revenge based on where I've been hurt or where I've been wronged in the past we need to come out of the higher octaves of this energy and again we really want to allow ourselves to respond from a higher place a higher level of wisdom to things and not be triggered into emotionally reacting based on anywhere we feel wounded in a, in a given moment as we're moving through this energy let's talk about some symbolism now okay we've got the sun for the full moon like i said this full moon is happening at exactly six degrees and zero minutes of the signs of aries and libra the sun at six libra that sabian symbol is a man watches his ideals taking concrete form before his inner vision we really are becoming like the master of our own destiny as we go through this process and as we are being given the opportunity to break ourselves free from the past ways that we have defined ourselves in the past move forward in this new direction if we can see it if we can imagine it you know we can create it moving forward in this new energy but not if we are still attached to the old versions of ourselves based on the unhealed wounds or you know whatever uh uh like original conception of ourselves that maybe we had our life is a reflection of right now, but is not truly who we are anymore. Okay. And then the, also the position of where the earth is and where the moon is always the, the earth and the moon are in a conjunction. When we have a full moon going on, the earth is always in a polar opposition to the sun. But of course the moon is also there during our full moon. And that Sabian symbol of six degrees of Aries is a square brightly lighted on one side. <laughs> so this moon, the position of the moon, six degrees of Aries, a square brightly lighted on one side, it is about, you know, discovering that we truly are capable of conquering anything, of finding our way out of any challenge, the remedies and the solutions to things that maybe we felt like were 
holding us back or limiting us or, you know, blocking our progress or boxing us in in some type of a way. A square brightly lighted on one side. This also makes me think of the Uranus um, Mercury energy, like solutions and, you know, suddenly being able to see things from a different perspective that might uh, provide some type of remedy or some um, release, right, from something that had been constraining us or confining us or blocking us in. So there is this definite energy even coming through on a symbolic level that is helping us to gain a level of awareness or some insight to break ourselves out or break ourselves free from something that has been limiting or containing us up until this point in time. And then the positions of the North and the South nodes, I also feel like are relevant in terms of the symbolism. Of course, the North node in the sign of Aries with the full moon, that Sabian symbol is a double promise, reveals its inner and outer meanings. Another indication that at this point in time, you know, we are destined to discover the deeper meanings of things, another layer of something, see things from another perspective. And, you know, what we are coming to find is showing us that maybe things are perhaps not what we had initially imagined them to be, but through our level of awareness, we now have the ability to make a choice to, you know, do things different or to make a change somehow. And then the position of the South Node in the sign of Libra, in the conjunction to Mars, who's ruling this full moon energy that Sabian symbol is the sight of an autumn leaf it brings to the pilgrim the sudden revelation of the mysteries of life and death so you know again end of an era transformation something that has served its course coming to its close and this is just a time of transition even being spoken about by the position of the south node we are moving on from something this is a time of great change this time of great transformation and it is likely to be happening in terms of relationships and in terms of finances so that is what we're looking at you guys a lot of words to basically say that Things are changing in terms of who we have associated ourselves with and who we have thought ourselves to be. We are realizing, you know, that maybe we are more or maybe we are different than we've been giving ourselves credit for, that we've been allowing ourselves to be, and things are about to change. So that's what I have to say, you guys, for our full moon energy. Let's grab a synchronicity card now. What do we need to know about what would be some additional guidance? What What's some advice that we could use as we're going through this uh as we're going through this full moon energy. And we had two cards that came shooting out of the deck. We have go for it and we have a blessing in disguise, both of which I feel like are, you know, very represented as well by the energy that we have going on right now. Sudden changes, and this is silver lining energy. Uranus is silver lining energy. It brings blessings in disguise. Like I said, you know, while what is happening now may not be the most comfortable, may sort of rock our world, you know, shake foundations and stuff like that, it is ultimately going to be for the best. Um, okay, so we have go for it. So he leaping up stood Acts 3 8. Take a leap of faith, go for it, take the chance and leap. You will find God is lifting you over the chasm and you are flying. If you do not have that faith, then find a bridge or teach yourself to have the faith. Nothing is impossible. Exactly with this Aries full moon, this is like we're all sort of primed and ready to take a risk, to take a chance, to do something different, to go in a new direction. Like that is where we are emotionally being called at this point in time. And again, like anybody that would seek to prevent that from happening, those are the relationships that are probably not going to endure through this. Next, we have a blessing in disguise. And the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, 1 Samuel 12, 18. Thunder and lightning can be frightening and give us a scare, but it is followed by a blessed rain. You are divinely guided and blessings follow once again, exactly accurate, you guys. That's what I'm saying. You know, things could get a little dicey as we're moving through this energy. It is indicating conflicts coming up in relationships, but it's also indicating an end to these conflicts and some type of silver lining, some type of divine intervention, it being for some type of higher purpose that is ultimately in our best interest. So going for it and realizing that blessings in disguise abound right now, you guys, that's what I have to say. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends if you think they would be into this type of astrology as well. Leave me comments, you guys. Please let me know if you're having experiences that match up with what I'm talking about in these videos. 
really appreciate your feedback knowing how this energy is affecting you so let me know in my comment section below love you guys so much um i post these whiteboards in my facebook group which is linked in my description box along with an instagram and a facebook page also and come back with me next time you guys we are going to have an october overview to talk about what's happening in the month of october week by week what can we expect <laughs> well i can tell you guys it's probably going to have a bit to do with what is happening with this full moon but there's a lot more and i will be here to talk about it and you should come with me you should come too so i will see you next time you guys have a beautiful full moon and until the next video bye guys